Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. My name is Charlie. Perhaps you are a senior in high school or perhaps a junior and you are totally sick of people coming up to you and saying, what are you gonna do after high school? And you have finally decided I am going to be a music major. Excellent decision. I'd like to give you 10 tips to avoid some common mistakes and help prepare you for that audition process. Let's get right into it. All right, my number one tip and the most important one is to get a private lesson teacher, preferably somebody who has a degree in music. They're gonna be able to help you navigate the process. They're gonna be able to help you select the right literature that you should play. And they're gonna help uh, just avoid some common pitfalls in that process because they've gone through that process themselves. As an extra added bonus, they may know someone inside of the audition room and can put in a good word for you. So you finally pick the school that you wanna to audition to. The next thing you need to do is do your research. You need to pour over the audition page online or any printed materials that they give you and study it backwards and forwards. You don't want there to be any surprises in the audition process. Furthermore, if you contact the music department and you ask questions that were already should have been answered on the audition page of their website is gonna make you look a little foolish and a little unprofessional, and you wanna avoid that scenario. Okay, number three, don't play music that is too hard for you. Now, speaking from a percussion standpoint, you're, you're gonna be in a room in a high pressure, tense situation, you're gonna be nervous, you're gonna be in an environment that you're not used to being in acoustically, and you're probably gonna be playing on an instrument that you're not used to playing on, and the bars might have slightly different spacing and some other things. So especially for a percussionist, there's gonna be a lot of variables that you can't really control for ahead of time. Okay, you don't wanna go in and play a piece of music that's at the very top of your skill level because you're gonna go in and it's probably not gonna to go too well. You wanna pick a piece of music that shows you off musically, that shows your soul as a musician. The judges in the room, you know, they, they're not gonna be impressed just because you can do something really hard. They're gonna be impressed if you have your own musical voice and they're gonna be impressed if you come in and you sound just like amazingly musical and breath of fresh air because when they go through an audition process, they're gonna hear 50 people play the same piece of music and they're all gonna play it kind of bland and sterile. If you can go in and show some originality in the way that you approach something, that's gonna do way more for you in the audition process than just playing the hardest possible thing that you can. Now that said, some colleges have a list of music that you have to pick from. They'll say, you must play one of these pieces. Okay, so in that scenario, you don't really have an option. These tend to be the more competitive schools. So if that's the case, you just have to go with what they say. But if they have, if you have some freedom in your selections, okay, pick something that's really gonna showcase off that musicality and that originality. Now, some of you may have started to think a little bit about networking, okay? In my personal opinion, and this, this isn't always doable, but in my personal opinion, if you can have some sort of connection with someone in the audition room before the audition, you're gonna have a leg up on your competitors. So this might be talking to the person at PASIC. This might be going to, if they have like a, like a day of percussion or like a mallet camp, if you're, if you're a percussionist, if they have something that you can go meet someone who's gonna be in the audition room, that is gonna give you a leg up, okay? If the first time that the professor ever hears of you is when you show up to audition, I'm not saying like you, you won't get in, because if you, you know, your playing should speak for itself, but if they recognize you when you come in, you're already gonna have a leg up. So maybe, um, you know, if you're visiting the university with your parents, like go meet some of the professors, go meet the, the private lessons person. And you're gonna wanna do that anyway because you wanna make sure that if you're gonna spend that much money and you're gonna study with somebody for four years, that it's someone that like you, you really like and it's someone who you think that their teaching style is gonna match well with your learning style. Okay, so now you've selected your music. The next thing you need to do is after you've learned the music, you need to play it in front of as many people as possible. If the first time you perform your piece in public is for the audition committee, you're probably not gonna do your best. So you can play it for your mom, dad, sister, cousin, uncle, friend, someone on Skype, play it for your pet, record yourself and watch it, very valuable also. But you wanna get as many performances as possible and that will allow your performance to mature as well. When you get into those high pressure adrenaline situations, you know, it's. It's good to practice being nervous and playing in front of a whole lot of people will help you practice being nervous for that audition and it will help you push through and express yourself musically even when the nerves start affecting your body. One of the more fun things you can do before your audition is to curate your social media. You know, if you are a kid in high school at this point watching this video, you've been around social media your entire life. You have things posted online about you on probably several different platforms spanning several years. When you audition for college, 
and apply for jobs for that matter, people are going to look at those things. So you, you either need to set all of that stuff to private or go through with a fine tooth comb and really make sure that it presents the image of you that you want to be presented. You know, if the audition committee looks online on your social media and they see you 16 years old with a bottle of vodka in your hand at some high school party, they're gonna be like, mm, that person's not serious enough to be in this music department. I have seen people lose their jobs. I have seen people lose auditions. I've seen people get kicked out of school because of the things that they post on social media. So you need to be really, really cognizant of what you have available for the public to look at before you go into this audition situation because they're gonna look. They're gonna look and they're gonna start making judgments on you based on those pictures. Now let's talk about the actual audition. You've set up your audition, you go in, and you are gonna wanna make the best impression possible. And part of that is dressing for success. You know, John Parks likes to joke about he gets a kid every year that comes in with a Hawaiian shirt that doesn't have their own sticks. That's a real thing, people do it. I did it. But that's a story for another day. I have an epic audition fail story to share with you uh, on the next video, so that'll be a treat. But you wanna go in looking nice and making a good first impression. So I'm not saying you need to wear like a suit or a tux because you know I don't like wearing coats when I play if possible because your sticks can get caught in the sleeves. But you want to wear something nice, collared, buttons. You want to look presentable. You want to wear clothes that fit you well. Okay, you want to make that good first impression because people do judge with their eyes when they meet somebody. And you want to make the most ball and first impression possible when you walk into that room. As you go through your audition process in the room, you don't want to talk too much. Okay, the judges, they're listening to a lot of people. They're probably behind schedule. Okay, you want to get in. Yes, you want your personality to show. You want to perform your music to the best of your abilities. Yes sirs, yes ma'ams, that sort of thing. But you don't wanna to talk too much in the room. You know, it's, it's generally not, not a lesson type environment, especially if you're auditioning for a larger school. They're just trying to listen to everybody and they're gonna be there for 10 hours listening to all these percussionists, right? So you don't wanna waste their time. Okay, you wanna get in, you wanna do what's asked, answer their questions and get out of the room. Now, if you audition for a smaller university or you like maybe uh, schedule an audition that's not on an official audition day, then maybe the audition panel will like to treat it more like a lesson and give you some advice and feedback. But in most scenarios, it is not a feedback type environment. They're listening to you, they say thank you very much, and they send you out the door. Now speaking of the judges being in a rush, it is quite possible that they're going to cut you off in the middle of one of your pieces, especially if you're auditioning for a huge program and they're running behind schedule, okay, and you have a eight minute marimba solo prepared or whatever, it's very possible they're gonna cut you off halfway. And you need to not let that psych you out and not take it personally, okay? It does not necessarily mean that they don't like what you're doing. It just means that they've heard enough to evaluate your skill and they're ready to move on to the next thing. Personally, when I'm listening to somebody, I know in the first 30 seconds what caliber of player I'm listening to. I know if they have their own unique sound. I know right away if they have musicality in their playing and sensitivity. I'll know in the first 30 seconds, okay? So if you're playing a six minute long piece and they cut you off at minute three, don't be offended, don't let it freak you out. It just means they have assessed your skill and they're, they're ready for you to move on to the next part of the audition. And lastly, this piece of advice is perhaps a little overlooked, but very important. And that is, don't be a dick. When you go into the audition room, there's gonna be several people. There'll be other people who are auditioning. There's gonna be students who are currently in the program. There's gonna be professors, there's gonna be parents, there's gonna be all kinds of people. Okay, and I know a lot of people, they go into an audition situation and they wanna show off, especially in the warm up room. They wanna talk smack about other people or how great they are or all these things. Here's the thing, there's gonna be lots of people there who are already a part of the studio and they take note of that stuff. So if you go in and you're all talking smack about other people or you go in and you're bragging about how amazing your skills are, they're gonna tell the professors, okay? They're gonna be like, yo, don't let this guy in, he's a jerk. You wanna be really careful about that. Plus, the people who are auditioning with you, if you get in and some of them get in, you're gonna be working together for four years. You don't wanna start off on the wrong foot by, by being a jerk to them, okay? So this, this is a little underrated, but I think it's very, very important that you treat everyone with respect, which you should do anyway if you're a decent human being. Okay, so avoid this pitfall. Be nice to everybody. Even if there's someone there who can't play paradiddles, okay? You still need to be nice, be friendly, do your thing, okay? Don't be a d 
So that's my list of 10 tips for you auditioning for music school. I actually had so many things that I probably will make a follow up video of six more tips for auditioning, particularly what to do after the audition process. So look for that video coming soon. And I also have an epic tale of my epic fail first college audition. So stay tuned to the channel. You won't want to miss it. Trust me. All right, guys, thumbs if you like it, subs if you loved it, bells if you want some more of it. I'll see you next time.